think of the way that the uh, San Antonio Houston series played out? Just... I wasn't surprised because um, they're a machine. You know, they just keep going at you no matter who's on the court. They don't run their system. Similar to us, I feel like, you know, where guy goes down, somebody steps in. And it's not mainly because, you know, they just gave Jonathan Simmons the ball and said, hey, go score for us. They ran a perfect offense uh, against that defense. And Coach Pop put them in great positions to be successful and to use their strength. So I wasn't surprised that they won a series, but I, I was kind of surprised how the last game ended or how the last game went. But that's just the Spurs, man. They just, you know, that's why they got the utmost respect because no matter who, who's on the court, they just keep coming at you. Being that you played the Spurs a few times in your career in the playoffs, what are some takeaways you can, you know, head into this series with? Nothing. You know? Nothing. You know who they are. I mean, it's not like I have an advantage or, you know, over the rest of my teammates. You know what the Spurs do. You know, they play great defense. They move the ball. They play together. They play for each other. And every time down, they play with passion and energy um, that you can't really see unless you're out there on the court. You know, it's kind of hard to see what they do and, and, and wonder why they're so good unless you're out on the court with them. So us as players, we got respect for them, but we know we have to come out there and be who we are um, We try to dictate the tempo. I know they're going to try to dictate it. That's why we both teams are where they are um, because they dictate the tempo in both series. So uh, we're going to have to you know, try to fight against that, and we'll see what happens. you think playing a team like Utah that muddies up the game similar to San Antonio kind of is going to help you out in this series? I, think it, I definitely think it's, it helped. You know, they, I feel like Utah runs the same type of offense, different players, of course, but the same, you know, uh, flow type of offense where they, you know, they pass, pass, and look for a great shot. And uh, definitely test your defense and test your endurance on the defense side of the ball. And I think we did a solid job in that series, but that's over with. It's a new team, new personnel, new group of guys that we got to get ready for. Things changed from that very first game of the season. Uh, it seemed like years ago, to be honest. You know, I think both teams have gotten so much better. Um, in the playoffs, you know, stuff happens. You know, Tony Parker went down, which was unfortunate, um, and guys had to step up. You know, we've uh, we switched our lineups up a bit, our rotations up a bit. So both teams has got has gotten way better since then, and that game shouldn't even shouldn't even matter when it comes to you know. Um, on Sunday, um, but you know personnel, you know who these guys are individually. It's just on us to go out there and execute the plan. Is this just the right amount of rest? I mean, you guys get to get back out there Sunday. Are you, are you glad that maybe that one didn't go game seven so that you get it rolling? I mean, that, that type of stuff you have no control over, so you can't even worry about, you know, what happens. And, you know, we're all professionals here. We've all been in the league for months, for years, and guys have been on teams that have gone this far in the playoffs before. So you know how you take care of your body, how you're supposed to prepare. So, you know, obviously you want to play, um, but, you know, it's not like we, you know, we're just super excited. We got five, six days of rest, but we know that, you know, it's important to get re-energized and mentally and physically, and, but at the same time, stay sharp. You mentioned having fun with that Kawhi matchup. Um, how, how might it change at all with his, him having a tough ankle injury right now? Um, if he's a he's a he's a soldier, man. He's a fighter, and um, you know if he's out there, he's not gonna make any excuses. And you know, if anybody's out there, I mean, I, I'm, I'm guessing they're they're full strength. So you know, I know he's he's gonna want to play. You know, just not even knowing him well, but just kind of knowing him as a basketball player that he's gonna want to play. And um, you know, that's what all great players do. They fight through injuries, fight through bumps and bruises. And, Circumstances, and he'll be out there. It'll be fun, fun to match up against him. But it's not me versus him. You know, it's, it's a team thing. And I think, you know, we got a lot of guys that throw at him and make him, and, and you know, get him uncomfortable. But he is who he is. He does what he does, and it's going to be tough to stop. But you know, we do it as a group. Would you view this series as maybe a changing of the guards type of a series? You know, you, you see San Antonio, you know, with the Ginobili, Parker, and obviously Tim Duncan retired last season. Um, you're on the downside of that era, you know, this team is very youthful and exuberant and you guys are coming in as kind of like the young guys. Would you, you kind of view that as maybe as like a changing of the guard kind of a series? No, I mean, I, I, you, you guys have so much time to think about those narratives, right? Uh, we don't. <laughs> we, we just play the game. We know 
what those guys do, whether it's Paul Gasol, Ginobili. We know how to impact the game. That's what we're you know, focused on more than anything. And that's what you're here for is to come up with stuff like that, which is you know, definitely something that you'll think about um, you know, as a fan of the game and, and, and seeing it and watching the game for so long. But as players, we know what Ginobili can go out there and hurt us. We know Paul Gasol can come out, have a huge series, along with the rest of the veteran guys. So you know, we got to be prepared for that as well. What do you have to watch for and uh, be focused on when you're defending Kawhi? Well, just trying to make his catches tough, make his shots tough, and uh, yeah. can't get discouraged. You know, a, a player that gets the ball, <clears throat> who has the ball a lot, and you know, gets control of offense, like creates for so many other people, he creates for himself. You know, uh, his confidence is sky high right now, and you know, getting more opportunities. He's gonna make tough shots. He's gonna, you know, hit you with a good move. Or, you know, you're gonna get screened. And he's gonna make a shot over two guys. That's just how it is. But you, you know, if you try to make it tough, make him, you know, inefficient, and make him have to get up a lot of shots to get his points, then I look at it as a solid night. But if you win, all that stuff really doesn't matter. Um, but for the most part, just try to make it tough on him, and um, you know, just try to make his catches tough. But he's gonna can't just get discouraged when he makes tough shots. A lot in the uh, Houston series more than they typically do with Simmons and somehow. Do you expect them to, to try to attack you right away in game one with, with maybe smaller lineups than their two traditional big lineups? They won last night about 30 against a small team with the big lineup, I think. Um, they had Gasol and uh, LA out there wreaking havoc in the paint. So they could play either way. Who knows, man? We even played small, we even played big, we've played against switching everything, we played against traditional defenses. Uh, so we got smart players that can adjust. We'll see what happens. How did they beat you in the opener? I think they had 21 offensive rebounds. You were a guy that kind of prides yourself defensively rebounding. I mean, how important in that series? Is that maybe one of your you know, top things you need to do is defensive rebound? Yeah, most definitely. And that's how they won this last series, I think, by keeping the basketballs alive. And we talked about that. We know they murdered us They murdered us in that, that first game, but that was the first game of the season. And uh, they've gotten so much better. We've gotten so much better. And, you know, we got so much comfortable with each other since then. Uh, but we know that offensive rebounding is something that always translates no matter what. And, um, you know, if we, if we end up uh, giving up that many offensive rebounds, they take more shots than us, it's going to be hard for us to, go, to win. So we all got to get in there and rebound. I know myself, I got to go in there and do a better job of, you know, trying to get double-digit rebounds. And, you know, that unlocks our fast break. So. You know, but we got to make them shoot tough shots, but we got to finish it with a rebound, like you said. You did play in the uh, third game against them, but obviously some, a lot of things went right. What did you see that turned that, that first game around? It's that third, game. third, third game? when they came back from 22 down? Yeah. Uh, I, f I felt like they, you know, they played they play extremely well to um, start the game. Their crowd was in it. They got up like 23 to 2 or 3 or something like that. And, you know, on the road, it's hard to overcome that, but I think we just stay with our, our game plan. That's what we always do. No matter if we're down 20, we don't rush. You know, we stick with our plan and try to exhaust the team out, and that's what we did in that game. And, um, but that doesn't matter. You know, it's, new, it's a new season. You know, what happens in the regular season doesn't matter at all. Um, and we know it's a different game plan. You be more prepared than ever um, against the team because uh, you got a few days to prepare for them. So. You know, we know these guys, they know us, uh, but that, you know, what happened in the regular season doesn't matter at all. As a competitor, you, you don't think that that, sit, that will sit a little bit in the back of their minds or in yours that you know you could do that if you got down? They know we can do that no matter if that happened or not. And uh, teams don't stop playing when they get up against us, and we don't stop playing when we get down. So they know what can happen. We know what can happen if we get up, and they, they can fight back and get back into the game. So, um it's not like they're thinking about that third game, just like, you know, we're not really thinking about the first game of the season. We know what they do, like I said. We know how they approach the game. Uh, they're well coached. They're a machine, like I said earlier. They just keep doing the same stuff over and over until they find a, a weakness and they exploit it. And uh, we got to be on point. As always, know, you know, uh, Coach Cobb is uh, the greatest uh, coaches ever. But uh, as you see, what is the Scary is the weapon from him. Yeah, I'm sorry. Scary is the weapon from Coach Pop. Oh, uh, 
I mean, he's just innovative, you know. He's a lot of the schemes that you see in the league now, it feels like, it feels like you know, you first seen it with the Spurs, whether it's, you know, forcing the guy in the post, forcing him on the baseline and having a double team come from the baseline or uh, running the hammers out of timeout. You know what a hammer is where you start the wing and somebody screens you to the corner for a wide open three or, you know, um, you know so if the wedge, the wedge pick and roll, I mean, if you go back and look at film, you know what I'm talking about. I know it sounds like, you know, like foreign language, but you know some of the stuff that a lot of teams do, they get it from the Spurs, and well, so many coaches that coach with the Spurs end up around the league as well, just because they have such a great system. So um, I just feel like he's innovative, and you never can underestimate um, a great championship, you know, mindset, and that's what they have over there. And we got the utmost respect for him, but we also know what we do. We know that we're a dangerous team as well that plays together, that plays for each other, plays with energy, and plays defense. So, you know, it's going to be two two great teams clashing. Kevin, do you feel like your defense, have got, your defense has gotten better here at the Warriors, and do you think you've been an underrated defensive player throughout your career? Underrated? Yeah. Um, my coaches don't feel like that. It's, you know, it's, I've gotten better since, you know, 2013 is where I thought I'd really turn the corner as a defender. And... Uh, Around 2012, that's when coaches stopped thinking they can, they can they can go at me and get a basket, uh, or I can you know get me get me in foul trouble. But you know I don't expect anybody on the outside of who really doesn't know the game to look at me as a defender, because uh, once you label something like label something, that's what you're gonna be. But I feel those last four or five years, I've definitely you know I continue to keep getting better and better and smarter, and um, I have the physical tools, but it's also about mentally knowing what to do. But I don't feel like I get picked on or people call sets just to try to score on me. That hasn't happened in a while. But I also know where I'm vulnerable at, which is, you know, uh, boxing out, you know, getting rebounds where I can, you know, banging down low with the big fellas. I, I definitely have to get better at that, but I've grown um, leaps and bounds from where I was. So I feel like I've been a solid defender in this league for a while. Great, thank you.